Welcome to WeWork, where there's no I in we. The goal of working here at WeWork is that we are all one. Excuse me, that sounds like a cult. No, it's not a cult. In fact, it's modeled after a commune, but with a capitalist theme. How can you have a capitalist theme for a commune? Isn't that self-contradictory? No, not at all. See, here our goal is for us all to work on our own small businesses in a building together, where we also all live, where we also all go to school, where we also pay rent to me. So, it's a cult? No, no, it's not a cult. Extra, extra, read all about it. I'm reporter Kit Kittredge here with today's news. As it turns out, multi-billion dollar empire WeWork was in fact a cult all along. And now WeWork, once a company valued at $50 billion, has filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy. But somehow it seems that WeWork founder and alleged cult leader Adam Newman is managing to hold on to his billionaire status. How could this be? Let's head over to Savvy's office to find out. Back in the summer of 2021, I was a completely different person. I had an ugly buzz cut, but to be fair, it's because I shaved my head for charity, but it definitely did not fit my egg-shaped head whatsoever. I also had massive boobs, each being the size of my shaved egg-shaped head, and I was terrible at makeup, and I had a shitty microphone, and my videos were just overall way less good than they are now in every single possible way. What I'm trying to say is a lot has changed since 2021. In the summer of 2021, I made a video about the trajectory of a company called WeWork from its founding 15 years ago to its rise to a billion dollar valuation that only continued skyrocketing to its potential red flags as a potential cult. In my previous video, which came out more than two years ago now, I analyzed WeWork as a company through the reviews of two pieces of media. First, the 2021 Hulu documentary WeWork, The Making and Breaking of a $47 Billion Unicorn, and second, the book Billion Dollar Loser, which covered all the dirty details of what made WeWork such a for lack of a better term, a unique company. But now, two years later, in November of 2023, after reaching a nearly $50 billion valuation, WeWork has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. But what makes this case so interesting is that the man behind it all, the strange cult-like figure known as Adam Newman, has left this tragedy relatively unscathed. So what is WeWork? What was WeWork? How did WeWork go from a simple office space rental company to a borderline cult? And what caused the downfall of a company that once dominated Gen X and millennial startup culture? All that and more coming in just a moment. Get you some nuts. Yeah, you effin'. Up yours, woke moralist. We'll see who cancels who. Hey, what's up my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy, welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business, where today we are gonna be covering a business which was the subject of a book I reviewed in the past. So a little bit of everything today, but if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos about these types of topics every single week. While I'm at it, I'd like to give a quick thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are listed up on the screen. If you check in the description below, you will see Patreon supporters who contribute $5 a month and up who have the option to link their own stuff that they wanna promote in the description below. So go ahead Ahead and check them out and give them some love as well. Additionally, my new merch drop for hipster unicorn fashion, my merch website just came out. I have these workout tanks as well as other workout tanks available there. And on top of that, just a lot of fun holiday themed stuff, fall stuff, including like a Christmas teddy bear sweater that I designed. It's all my original art. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and check that out. And now before we head into the gossip, the drama, the dirty details of what went down, let's all gather around and pour ourselves a a glass of wine first. In fact, I think I have a delicious sweet Riesling I can drink from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Bright Cellars, a wine club that makes it easy for you to find new wines that you love sourced from all over the world, but in a convenient box shipped right to your home. I was really excited when Bright Cellars reached out to me about this partnership. Most of you guys probably know that I'm a big fan of bourbon and of craft beers, but that sometimes I struggle to find the wines that I like best. And when it comes to my taste in wine, I've always known two things. First, that I like white wines better than red wines, and second, that I like sweet wines the best. And even just knowing those two things about my preferences, Bright Cellars made it super easy to help me find new wines that I'd love. And I was so excited to get this box right now in the middle of November since it's fall, it's getting chilly outside, and I just love the cozy feeling of curling up under a blanket with a book and a glass of wine. As my glass today says, Nazdrowie! Shout out to all my fans who speak Polish. Anyway, here's how Bright Cellars work. 
works. First, you head to their website, brightsellers.com, where you can take a quiz about your taste preferences. That way, even if you don't know exactly what wines you like, they can help you find the best wines for you based on your tastes in other alcoholic beverages, your taste in non-alcoholic beverages like coffee and tea, and even your taste in food. Taking the quiz was really fun, and honestly, I found it to be pretty effective because when I received my box of wine in the mail, I thought Bright Cellars nailed it. One of my favorite wines to order at restaurants is a Riesling, so I decided that would be a wonderful wine to try first, and y'all, this did not disappoint. The wine was sweet, tasty, not too heavy, a delicious drink to have while cozying up with a book. That was exactly the vibe I was going for. So if you're looking for some new wines to try this season, whether for a cozy night in with a book or for other fun fall and winter festivities like upcoming holiday parties, family gatherings for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or New Year's, or maybe having a holiday movie night with your friends, I definitely recommend trying Bright Cellars. To give it a try, head to the link in my description below where you can take the quiz and find some tasty new wines. By clicking my link, you'll get to try your first six bottle subscription box, which usually includes a value of about $150 for just $55. That's six bottles of wine selected specifically for you for just $55. If that sounds like something that you'd like to give a try, go ahead and click that link in my description box and take the wine quiz. I'd love to know what wines you guys try as well and how you guys like them. So thank you again to Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's video. Now let's dive back into our topic. So let's start off with some background information and some context. What is WeWork? WeWork was first conceived in 2008 by a man named Adam Newman, with WeWork's first location officially opening in New York City in 2011. Adam Newman was born in Israel, where he spent his childhood growing up in a kibbutz, and when he moved to the U.S., he found himself disappointed at the lack of community living we have here, which, same, I get it, I understand. Alone isn't so bad. I like alone. But Adam's idea of community living wasn't based on mutual benefit. Rather, it was based on profit. That's where he came up with the idea for a capitalist commune. And if that sounds like an oxymoron, that's because Adam Newman is a scammer. See, the commune part meant that everyone would live together, go to school together, work together. But the capitalist part meant that everyone would be working on their own businesses. Everyone would be making their own money and everyone would be paying money to Adam directly for the privilege of doing so. So when Adam says the alliterative phrase capitalist commune, what he's actually referring to is a third different C word. This is a cult. I brought you to a cult. WeWork's business model was fairly straightforward. It was a co-working space, basically a large building full of desks and conference rooms and other spaces where you can get your work done. And if you run a small company that can't afford to rent out a whole office of its own, or you're a freelancer who lives in a tiny apartment but needs space to set up your stuff for work, or you may occasionally need some space to meet with clients, you might rent out a spot in a co-working space. You might rent a desk for a monthly fee, or you might rent out a larger room if you have multiple employees with you, that kind of thing. Basically, it's a giant office space with lots of different companies and entrepreneurs working on different things, side by side working together, but also working separately. And I get the idea, as an entrepreneur myself and a very extroverted one at that, sometimes it's really helpful to have other creative people around you who can all feed off of each other's knowledge. We finish each other's sandwiches. This in and of itself is not a bad idea. The business model is real estate. The business model is office space rental. That's all there is to it. But Adam Newman didn't see it that way. He didn't want to be in the business of office space rentals, despite starting an office space rental company. Instead, Adam frequently advertised WeWork as a company about people, about a way of life. The company grew over the years, first reaching a milestone valuation of $1 billion and becoming known as a unicorn, the term for startups that pass the billion dollar valuation. My horn can pierce the sky. And ultimately reaching a valuation of nearly $50 billion. Soon, Adam also started up We Live, an apartment complex attached to WeWork where everyone could live in studio apartment style living while also working in WeWork spaces. Resistance is futile. The idea being if everyone's living together and working together, well, now we've got community living. Adam's wife, Rebecca, a failed avant-garde actress who also just happens to be Gwyneth Paltrow's cousin, then created another arm to the business, We Grow, a school, a place where WeWork employees and We Live residents could send their young kids to preschool, kindergarten, elementary school, where they could learn all about how to run a business and be indoctrinated into capitalist commune philosophy. Persistence is futile. So if you live 
at the place where you work and your kids go to school in the same place where you live and work, yet the cult vibes were definitely there. And employees were starting to notice the high level of control that Adam was starting to exert over their lives, demanding that employees spend their time at drug-fueled, Woodstock-inspired summer camp type getaways with him, paying his employees in falsely valued stock options, lying to investors about the company's true purpose, calling it a tech company when it was in fact an office space rental company, all while buying himself lavish expensive homes in the Hamptons, going on extravagant vacations, and hoarding more and more wealth as he ascended into billionaire status. WeWork's downfall first began a few years ago, after their disastrous attempt to become publicly traded back in 2019. But now, today, in November of 2023, it may be time to nail the coffin finally shut on WeWork, as the company has now declared bankruptcy. I declare bankruptcy! So what happened to WeWork? On November 7th, 2023, a press release from the Associated Press read, WeWork has filed for Chapter 11 Bankruptcy Protection, a stunning fall for the office sharing company that once promised to upend the way people went to work around the world. The filing comes at a time of incredible disruption in the commercial real estate market. The COVID-19 pandemic led to a spike in vacancies and major markets from New York to San Francisco are still struggling, but it was an aggressive expansion in WeWork's early years that led to the bulk of its current troubles. The company went public in October 2021 after an attempt two years earlier collapsed spectacularly. The debacle led to the ousting of founder and CEO Adam Newman, whose erratic behavior and exorbitant spending spooked early investors. All right, so let's have a little context here. Back in 2019, WeWork first decided to go public. WeWork's primary investor was the Japanese company SoftBank, and with SoftBank's investments, Adam had been advertising WeWork as a company of having a $47 billion valuation. However, once the company actually went public, it turned out that his valuation was just a little bit off, publicly traded, people found that WeWork was actually worth closer to $8 billion, about a sixth of what Adam had previously claimed. Seems a tad low. Soon, people started to lose trust in Adam, seeing him as the problem, his own self-centered actions, his strange, chaotic, and unpredictable behavior, and his relentless need for control over his company and his employees. Eventually, Adam stepped down as CEO of WeWork, and we'll return to Adam's story in just a bit. But that's all to say that WeWork definitely became less culty once Adam left. A few WeLive-style apartment pods still remained in WeWork's New York office, but most WeWork locations around the country just started operating the the way normal people would expect them to operate as office space rental companies as what they actually were. In 2021, WeWork ended up successfully going public without Adam Newman involved whatsoever after going through a special purpose acquisition company merger. Now, back to the press release and the bankruptcy. Despite efforts to turn the company around since Newman's departure, including significant cuts to operating costs and rising revenue, WeWork has struggled in a commercial real estate market that has been rocked by the rising cost of borrowing money as well as a shifting dynamic for millions of office workers now checking into work remotely. So that's an important point to bring up here. We really can't overstate the impact that COVID had on the commercial real estate market. I'm sure a lot of us remember March 2020 pretty well with the U.S. experiencing its first major wave of COVID lockdowns and trying to curb the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to a lot of offices moving their businesses online or trying to switch to a work from home style structure. Even after many of us had gotten vaccinated, even after many public locations had opened back up three years later, a lot of traditional desk jobs have not returned to office buildings. And that makes a lot of sense. In a lot of ways, working remotely is just more efficient. Lockdowns forced us to learn how to use Zoom and other video conferencing tools. It forced bosses and managers to adapt to virtual meetings, and many companies started hiring employees who didn't even live anywhere near the main office. She doesn't even go here. Renting an office space became an unnecessary expense. Why would employees want to spend an extra hour every day commuting to an office when they can do the exact same work from their computer at home, often faster without the distractions of an office environment all around them? And why would a company's owner want to continue paying to rent a giant office space when the exact same work can be accomplished from home? You make very compelling argument. Now, as we all know, this doesn't apply to every industry. There are plenty of jobs that can't be done from home, most medical work, for example. But for a lot of jobs in marketing, advertising, software development, computer programming, journalism, and more, keeping it remote just made sense for everyone involved. As a result, a lot of big cities now have a lot of empty office spaces. And a company like WeWork, which relied on the assumption that having an office space was a necessity in the first place, well, they became unnecessary too. As the Associated 
Press reports, in Monday's filing, WeWork listed about $18.7 billion in debts and $15.1 billion in assets as of June 30th. On November 6th, the New York Times released an article about this called WeWork Files for Bankruptcy Amid Glut of Empty Offices. The company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in New Jersey as part of what it described as a comprehensive reorganization of its business. WeWork stock has fallen more than 98% since the start of the year, and the company was valued at less than $45 million as of Friday. At its peak in January 2019, the company was worth around $47 billion. It used to be $47 billion with a B. Now we got 45 million with an M, okay? In September, WeWork said it would begin to renegotiate all its leases and exit certain locations. On its website, it lists 660 locations in 37 countries, down from the 764 locations in 38 countries it had about two years earlier. The company was renting nearly 20 million square feet of office space in June, more than any other company in the United States. Monday's actions will not affect WeWork franchises outside the United States and Canada, the company said. So WeWork is continuing to Fail. Adam Newman's now lost his status as CEO about four years ago, and since then, though the company's been better without him, they're still failing. So where has Adam himself been in all of this? On November 8th, Bloomberg released an article called Adam Newman Remains a Billionaire Even with WeWork Bankruptcy. As the article reports, the office leasing business declared bankruptcy this week with two years after finally going public, minus its infamous co-founder. It has $19 billion of liabilities and $15 billion of assets. Longtime investors, including SoftBank and the Vision Fund, will add to the enormous losses they've already taken on the venture. It has been challenging for me to watch from the sidelines as WeWork has failed to take advantage of a product that is more relevant today than ever before, Newman44 said in a statement. But part of Newman might be thankful that he was forced out in 2019 following the company's disastrous first attempt at an initial public offering. While battering his reputation, the exit left him with plenty of liquidity and he is still worth $1.7 billion according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. Don't we just love when the worst person involved in a company creates a giant mess for everyone else to clean up, then walks away super rich? What a jerk! tale as old as time. Now, Bloomberg continues, to be sure, WeWork's failure hurt Newman's wealth. When it went public in a merger with a special purpose acquisition company in 2021, Newman had a fortune of $2.3 billion, according to the index, with nearly one third in WeWork shares. They've since fallen more than 99%. Okay, so Adam has at least lost some money, but the money he lost was due to the fact that some of his wealth was tied up in the stock of his own company, which he messed up. For most people, messing up your company means that you lose your livelihood, maybe have to start a new business or get an entirely new job just to support your family. For most of us, if we mess up at work, we don't just lose half of our money and still remain a billionaire while everyone else has to pick up the debris left behind from the fires we set to our own company in the first place. WeWork's bankruptcy is costing SoftBank, founded and led by billionaire Masayoshi Son, an estimated $11.5 billion in equity losses with another $2.2 billion in debt still on the line. The bankruptcy process is expected to take months and will decide how creditors divide their remains of the company. So far, court papers show that billions of dollars of the firm's debt will be converted into equity while nearly all shareholders and owners of low-ranking bonds will be wiped out. So Adam Newman fucked over a lot of people. But at least he had to suffer the emotional turmoil of watching his passion project, the company he put his heart and soul into, die before his very eyes. Right? Right? Well, let's see what Bloomberg has to say. These days, Newman is busy with a new startup, Flow, which has received a $350 million investment from venture capital firm Anderson Horowitz at a $1 billion valuation in August of 2022 before even beginning operations. Flow will operate multifamily residential properties that aim to foster a feeling of ownership and community. Oh, so he's just doing literally the exact same shit as before. It was exactly the same thing. Being a landlord who LARPs at being part of a commune, claiming that he's creating a community but with the money going to himself the owner of everything. He's learned literally nothing. Look what you did, you little jerk. But from Adam's perspective, why should he have to learn? He's rich as hell. And I hate that I have to say this, but I'm not entirely sure what the lesson is that we're supposed to take away from all of this. That scammers are gonna scam, that shitty self-centered people will usually still come out on top because we live in a world that values wealth above all else. At the very least, I hope the tale of WeWork is signaling the downfall of the rabid startup culture that 
dominated the 2000s and the 2010s. We're in a new decade now, and in this decade so far, there has been more of a cultural focus on, at the very least, trying our best to be ethical, even though it can be difficult sometimes. While 10 to 15 years ago, most of us were idolizing people like Steve Jobs and many Gen Xers and millennials were thirsty for a delicious taste of Silicon Valley startup culture, it seems that now this type of workaholic craze has been dying down, and maybe we're all starting to get more skeptical of it as time goes on. In many of my videos, I've talked about how the 2010s were all about the startup culture, about girl boss culture, and more, all of that kind of thing. Nowadays, girl boss memes are ironic, and the concept of self-care has become cool. So maybe we're heading into an era of no longer idolizing billionaires and instead keeping our guards up to look for red flags before deciding to work for a company, much less tie our entire life up in it. But I'm curious what you guys think of all of this as well. Do you guys think this is going to be the end of we work for good. Do you think there's any way that this company can salvage itself? And do we think Adam Newman will ever face true consequences for his actions? Please let me know what you think in the comments below. But for now, had a shorter video this week. We'll be back with a longer one next week. So I will see you then. But in the meantime, have a good weekend. Bye, friends. Get you some nuts. Yeah, you effin'. Up yours, woke moralist. We'll see who cancels who.